Welcome to Chicago Independent Television, a collection of progressive video reports by grassroots media workers from Chicago and beyond, produced free from corporate or commercial support or influence. I'm Amy Cargill. I'm standing in Chicago's Humboldt Park neighborhood, a neighborhood home to many Puerto Rican and Mexican community members. In this episode, we'll feature the May Day 2007 immigrants' rights protest in Chicago and we'll also join with labor activists from Florida who celebrate a dramatic victory in Chicago over McDonald's. We'll also visit a Chicago panel discussion about war and racism, and we'll join with peace activists who protested a pro-war Illinois congressman. Stay with us. Does AT&T hate poor people? To find out, we asked a media activist and a stuffed walrus. Well, AT&T is trying to set up their version of cable TV. Hate poor people! I think AT&T hates everybody! But AT&T doesn't want to have to pay for public access channels or community media centers which are used by poor people. I heard that AT&T lobbyists drown kittens! They don't want to have to pay for building out infrastructure to poor neighborhoods. And they drown them in toilets filled with acid! They tried to push through laws in Congress to get what they want, but citizens rose up to block that. One lobbyist even has Telly Zavala's brain in a jar at his desk! So they're going state by state to try to do the same thing, and have succeeded in 14 states already. Oh, he has Telly Zavala's brain in a toilet with acid and dead kittens! They could be coming to your state soon. AT&T tells everyone to go suck it! So does AT&T hate poor people? I think the answer is clear. Welcome back to Chicago Independent Television. On May 1st, 2007, immigrant workers and advocates from across America organized massive protests to demand equal rights. For the second year in a row, the largest of these events took place in Chicago. This segment comes to us from a Chicago videographer who documented the protest march. On May 1st, 2007, Immigrant workers and families across the United States took to the streets. Their goal was to send a message that they demand to be treated with fairness and dignity. This was the latest in a series of demonstrations that started over a year ago, and the largest of these demonstrations have taken place right here in Chicago. A few days before this protest was to take place, government officials armed with machine guns raided a shopping center in Chicago's south side detaining around 160 shoppers for several hours. The purpose of the raid was ostensibly to find and arrest people making false identification papers. Some immigrants' rights advocates expressed a concern that the raid was designed to intimidate the immigrant community just days before this May Day protest was to take place. However, community outrage sparked by the raid instead boosted attendance, attracting hundreds of thousands of people. The turnout was so much more than anyone had expected that at the last minute, police decided to move the final destination of the march from Daly Plaza to the less visible Grant Park. This unilateral decision by police was met with strong objections by the demonstration organizers. The demonstration included a rally at Union Park with noted speakers and a four-mile march to the final rallying point at Grant Park. This is a report filed by a videographer who participated in a portion of the march itself. Aquí estamos apoyando a toda la raza latina y no tienen que hacer discriminación contra los hispanos porque este país está lleno de hispanos y es de hispanos. I'm excited to be here and with all my all my Mexican friends and all the other countries. No, it doesn't sting, but we want a, a good report.
realmente lo, lo que quiere decir el sign es que estamos repitiendo otra vez la historia de los afroamericanos de la década de los 60. Es la misma historia que se repite ahora. ¡Sí se puede! 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 We are here together with all these people because we are one for our immigrant brothers and sisters that has not got their papers to be able to work. We are not Osama Bin Laden. We are not terrorists. We are people here that want to work. We want all we wanted to have in our status. We want a driver's license and we want a legal, a legal paper so we could be able to work like everybody else. We are taxpayers. So, all right, God bless you everybody that's seen this and hopefully that we get what we're asking for. Thank you very much. Vean ese letrero, nosotros trabajamos y nos quitan los taxis y no nos quieren dar nada, no es justo. We're here to for you guys to respect our rights and to be with our family. I'm an American citizen, I was born here, but my family is not. But I want them to be here with me, I don't want nobody to separate us. I'm Alejandro Molina, and you're watching Chicago Independent Television. I see the soul of a nation. Nah, must be true, cause I've seen it on TV. In my country, a group of religious extremists are reshaping the government to promote their own agenda and morality. The government can keep a list of everyone I call, and they do not need a judge's permission. Our citizens are seized and held in prison without being charged of a crime, without the right to a trial, and without a lawyer. Why should you care about what is happening to my country? <laughs> because my country is the United States of America. Welcome back to Chicago Independent Television. Impoverished tomato pickers from Florida came to Chicago in April to protest for higher wages against the fast food giant McDonald's. But that protest soon became a celebration, as we'll see in this next segment. The Coalition of Immokalee Workers is a labor rights organization from the town of Immokalee, Florida. Since 2005, the coalition had been pressuring McDonald's, demanding higher wages and greater worker rights for Immokalee workers who pick the tomatoes used in McDonald's foods. Chicago, home to the headquarters of McDonald's, has been the locale of numerous Immokalee-led actions, and the coalition had organized for months for a major convergence and rally in Chicago in April 2007. But five days before the rally, McDonald's agreed to the coalition's demands. So, instead of a rally at Federal Plaza in downtown Chicago, the coalition organized a celebration at the House of Blues near downtown Chicago.
The celebration also featured a performance by two members of the musical group Rage Against the Machine. Watching Chicago Independent Television. I see the soul of a nation. Must be true because I've seen it on TV. If elected, I'll lie about weapons of mass destruction as a pretext to invade another country. I'll call myself an environmentalist and gut clean air standards. Our allies will go from respecting us to hating us, and I don't care. I'll leave no child behind, unless they can't afford it. I promise to keep you in a state of fear and anxiety so you never question what we're doing. And if you do, we'll call you unpatriotic. Friggin' on.